What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we have got, simply put, a way, way too early 2024 fantasy football mock draft. But I figured with the actual NFL draft just having concluded, now is a great time to take an early look at what some of these mock drafts might look like later on in the year. And we'll take into account some of these rookies now that we know where they've landed. And we'll give you our feedback on where we see them drafted or if we select them for our own team. So with that being said, as you can see, we've got the setup all ready to go. This will be a 12-team full PPR mock where we will be selecting on Fantasy Pros with the sixth overall pick right smack dab in the middle of it all. Our roster, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and then five bench spots. But that's pretty much it. And while this loads, a quick reminder, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at AllDayPigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section, do you agree, disagree with these picks, along with any other questions you guys might have. We'll do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get into it. And the first five picks are in. They are as follows. Christian McCaffrey, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. Now it is our turn. Now, a couple things that stand out here. First and foremost, Justin Jefferson, no longer the consensus number one wide receiver. Uh, that probably has a lot to do with the fact that Kirk Cousins is now with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, as far as the other wide receivers, their names that we know, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, um, nothing too crazy there. If we were going wide receiver here, you know, I think uh, somebody that I really like, I'm on Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson. Obviously, Puka Nakua is very high after his phenomenal rookie season. But here, I'm going to be going running back. And I think a running back that's going to be really, really good this year, uh, Brees Hall, especially now, hopefully with a healthy Aaron Rodgers, that offense is going to be completely different. I also really like Bijan Robinson. Again, I think with a legitimate quarterback and Kirk Cousins, it's going to be a completely different situation. Um, I don't think Garrett Wilson will fall to me. So let's just see how this thing plays out. If Garrett Wilson does fall to me, then I will more than happily take him. Uh, but for the time being, uh, let's look at the draft board because this is where it gets interesting. And boy, oh boy, uh, you know, you can tell it's early. You can tell that uh, not a lot of people have still finalized their rankings, things of that nature, because we're going to see some craziness here pretty quickly. So after our Brees Hall selection, Amon Ross St. Brown, okay, no worries there, Bijan Robinson, uh, then A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, I love the Garrett Wilson pick, um, I think that he's going to have a major bounce back se season, similar to a Brees Hall with Aaron Rodgers healthy. And then, didn't have to wait too, too long for the craziness, Sam Laporta, the last pick of the first round. Now, yes, I know he was a sensation as a rookie, and we told you guys, you know, he's a great sleeper, proved it, but, you know, I, I think it's a little bit too aggressive to take him that early. Um, so, that's my two cents on that. Then Puka Nakua, uh, Jameer Gibbs. Michael Pittman, Devonte Adams. So Michael Pittman, huge year last year, um, and he's been catapulted to an early second round pick. I don't think that will continue to be the case. Um, then Devonte Adams, followed by Jonathan Taylor, really good value there for Jonathan Taylor and Marvin Harrison. We have got our first rookie. Now look, Marvin Harrison, by all accounts, is an elite wide receiver. Uh, he was pretty much the consensus number one wide receiver coming out of this year's draft. But, but, I'm going to have a hard time selecting Marvin Harrison here when guys like, you know, uh, if we look at the wide receiver position, uh, just kind of sorting it out, guys like Chris Olave, Ayuk, DJ Moore, Jalen Waddell, uh, Stephon Diggs uh, are, are still all there. Now, again, this has been a very wide receiver heavy mock draft. I think last year after uh, people got burned by passing on somebody like a Christian McCaffrey, uh, they're going to come back down to earth a little bit and say like, okay, the running back position is still pretty damn important. So let's not forget that. But my point being here is Marvin Harrison, a rookie um, in a situation where, you know, 
Sure, if this is a dynasty draft, yeah, you take him early, but I'm not selecting a rookie wide receiver uh, this early. Like, if it was a rookie running back, okay, and he's in a perfect situation, but I'm sorry, Marvin Harrison, this is way, way too early for him, uh, in my personal opinion. Now, we look at some of these other playmakers here. Um, we went Brees Hall with our first selection. I'm not going quarterback. We could potentially do Travis Kelsey, but again, I think there's going to be some better value later on. So if I'm looking at uh, what I think is just the best value, I honestly think it's Saquon Barkley here. I'm going back-to-back -back running backs. Kyron Williams, uh, he was sensational last season, but look, the the Rams invested some decent draft capital in uh, in running back in Corum from Michigan, so that's something for us to remember as well. So again, there's going to be some caveats here, and things will play out as there's injuries, as you know battles are sorted out in camp, you know preseason, et cetera, et cetera. But I do think right now probably our best bet is to go running back. And again, this is a super way, way, way too early look at all of this because this will change a lot. And, you know, if you look at this two months from now, it could be completely flipped on its head. So keep all of that in mind. Um, this is more so just a fun exercise to get a feel uh, of what things look like at this very early juncture. So Brendan Ayuk afterwards, I like Brendan Ayuk. Uh, we'll see if he gets traded or not. Travis Etienne, DJ Moore, good value on DJ Moore. Cooper Cup, Chris Olave, uh, Cooper Cup, a good value. Kyron Williams, Josh Allen, uh, A-Chain for the uh, Miami uh, backfield. We'll see. They, they, they've they added some, again, competition there as well. It's never an 100% uh, cluster crystal clear situation I feel like in the Miami backfield than Jalen Hurts Travis Kelsey's the first two running backs here in the third round uh, Travis Kelsey probably would have been my pick in uh, the middle of the uh, third round here if he was still available but it's okay no worries so now here here we're in a situation where uh, probably best to go with a pass catcher and looking at these guys you know Mike Evans uh, I don't want him to be my number one wide receiver. Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs is there. So that's a little bit of a tough situation. Debo Samuel, um, he could be traded. I think Jalen Waddell is a potentially nice pick. Keenan Allen is also, I think, a really, really good value pick. I'm hoping that he falls to me. Let's look at the cheat sheets here um, and see where he kind of ranks overall. But something that I will say, if you guys are very high on Marvin Harrison Jr., you should be equally as high on Malik Neighbors. Um, you know, there were some people saying, oh, Malik Neighbors could be the better overall wide receiver, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And he's going to be in a situation uh, just like Marvin Harrison, where he's the number one guy there. So uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go with Jalen Waddle, and then hopefully either Malik Neighbors or Keenan Allen fall to me. Uh, that's kind of how I'm going to play this thing out. And then you know, we shall go from there. So let's go ahead and select um, Jalen Waddle, proven wide receiver. Uh, Nico Collins, I think, is just going to have a little bit too much competition uh, with the uh, additions in Houston. So now we go back to wide receiver. Let's look at the draft board to see what happened. Uh, so Jalen Waddle, Patty Mahomes, Josh Jacobs, Rashad White, Rashid Rice, even though he's has some legal troubles, Derrick Henry, Nico Collins, Pacheco, Lamar, CJ Stroud, James Cook, Debo, and Trey McBride. Trey McBride had a great, great season. So uh, I like that uh, selection there. So now here, I said Malik Neighbors. I said Keenan Allen. I think Malik Neighbors, uh, the targets could be easier for him to come by. However, obviously, the flip side is you've got um, well, Daniel Jones throwing him the football. So that is worrisome to say the least. So, um, I, with Keenan Allen, you know, the situation that you have is yes, Caleb Williams, major, major upgrade, uh, compared to Justin Fields, uh, in, in that situation. But I really do think that, um, it's going to be a situation where, um, with DJ Moore, Romo Dunze, that ball is going to be spread out a bunch. I, I like Stefan Diggs, but again, it's a similar situation to me. Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, a lot, a lot of guys there. So 
honestly, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get a little bit crazy here. I'm gonna take Malik Neighbors as my number two wide receiver, and then we will see what happens afterwards. So let's see where um, where some of these other guys went. There was a little bit of a running back run: Mixon, Kamara, Kenneth Walker, Stephon Diggs, Mike Evans, Devonta Smith, James Conner, Richardson, Amari Cooper, DK Metcalf. So I think here, kind of the messages for the wide receivers, the rookie wide receivers at least, like Malik Neighbors, Michael Pittman. Pittman will probably be the first guy to go, but if there's a substantial gap between him and neighbors, you take advantage of that all day long. You take Malik neighbors, in my personal opinion. Uh, and then now here, I think Keenan Allen is a very, very good value uh, piece. You know, I think you could argue he's could be the number one wide receiver for Caleb Williams. Um, you know, overall, I think he's a little bit more of a polished wide receiver than DJ Moore. Uh, so again, in, in full PPR also as well, very, very good value. But Again, those targets will be distributed in a way that we might not necessarily be used to. So now here we're in a really good situation to start talking, uh, hopefully some other selections, um, some other rookies. So, you know, after our Keenan Allen pick, you see Aaron Jones, Christian Kirk, Mark Andrews. So some tight ends go, Javante Williams. I, I don't like the situation in Denver with the running backs. Uh, they have Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, Joe Burrow, Pickens, Nick Chubb coming off you know his major injury, Ramondre Stevenson, Kittle, and Eckler now in Washington. You know Eckler looked kind of like he was done last year. I told you guys probably it, last year was the last good-ish year you would have out of Austin Eckler. Um, you know maybe you could argue sixth value, a uh, sixth round is decent value for Austin Eckler uh, for what he might still be able to do. But he's he's not going to be the Austin Eckler that was carrying you to championships two years ago type of situation. Just keep that in mind. So now here we have, uh, if we want to go with other wide receivers, T. Higgins, McLaurin, Calvin Ridley, the number of, well, I guess number two guy in Tennessee, DeAndre Hopkins is still there, but um, not too worried about that. Deontay Johnson, however, in Carolina is ranked way way, way too low in these rankings. Uh, so is Marquise Brown. So we're going to capitalize on that in a little bit. I think here, however, we could go with uh, some pass catchers at the tight end position. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, Evan Ingram was a stud last year. Um, Kyle Pitts now. Is Kyle Pitts finally going to be freed um, with, you know, uh, New situation in Atlanta, coaches, quarterback. I think this could be the year. Um, but, you know, if we're talking just value right now, I think, uh, you know, he, he's, he should be in a similar tier to me in, as Kincaid, as, as Ingram, um, a, as is the case right now. I don't think he should be that much lower. So here, you know, I'm looking at some of these other running backs. Tony Pollard is in Tennessee. I don't think he's going to be the top guy, you know, um, Looking at DeAndre Swift in Chicago, that's, I think, probably right now one of the uh, better situations. You know, they paid him, and I think uh, that's a pretty good offense there. He's a good pass-catching running back. I can talk myself into uh, into that situation. So let's go with that. You know, we still need a quarterback, but it's okay. Um We'll be able to snag something pretty good, I think. So a little bit of a run on tight ends. Perfectly fine with that. That makes our decision easier. So David Njoku, Kyle Pitts. Yes, yes. Um, let's see. Marquise Brown is coming up. Uh, Kyler Murray is still there. Let's see how many teams have tight ends here. Um, one, two, uh, three after us. Um, we could gamble. But let's let's see. I'll go with Kyle Pitts right now. Um, like I said, I think it's a much, much better situation for him. So let's see where Marquise Brown and Deontay Johnson go. I'm going to be really, really curious about that. So, ooh, again, Calvin Ridley, Jordan Addison, a really good value pick. Um, but I still think while Justin Jefferson is there and with the quarterback downgrade they have, Jordan Addison isn't going to necessarily duplicate the success that he had last year. Um, so Deontay Johnson is still on the board for us, however, and I think Deontay Johnson is an easy, easy selection here. He's going to be the wide receiver one for Carolina. 
um, and they're going to air it out, air it out to him often. Um, so now looking back at our cheat sheet, I'm not afraid to go with a uh, you know with a rookie quarterback here in Caleb Williams potentially. I, I believe the hype about Caleb Williams. Let's just say that the fact that Justin Herbert is ranked so so low is a little bit disrespectful. Now I get it; he's lost pretty much everyone uh, on that offense, but you know I still think Justin Herbert can be a good quarterback. Um, Caleb Williams, I'm going to go with the upside. If I'm going with upside, Caleb Williams, Kirk Cousins, uh, it's just a matter of what happens with that Achilles, how fast can he bounce back. I think Aaron Rodgers uh, is going to be really, really, like this is a war path type of Aaron Rodgers. But hey, let's, you know, let's give some love to some of these, to some of these rookies here. Um, so we'll go with Caleb Williams. Uh, I, like I said, I believe the hype. If we're talking rookie running backs, you know, You've got Trey Benson in Arizona. Yes, potentially. I think it's probably a conversation between him and Jonathan Brooks for the top rookie running backs when you look at situations. But uh, I think there's more of a committee in Carolina and obviously Brooks coming off of an ACL. So tempering expectations. TJ Hawkinson also a really, really good value. Uh, like, sure, I get it. Um, you know, injury and Kirk Cousins no longer there, but TJ Hawkinson didn't just forget how to play football. Dalton Schultz are really good value. So a lot of a lot of crazy values right now that probably won't be the case in a couple of months from now. So I'm going to go with Caleb Williams here and then three more picks and we're going to wrap this thing up. Ooh, Jonathan Brooks, I believe I saw just go. So some of these rookie running backs, uh, Blake Corum, Trey Benson. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I do like that Jonathan Brooks was the first rookie selected uh, at the running back position. Now, I do want to quickly say you're not going to see any first round, second round rookie running back selections in fantasy mock drafts this year. Um, this was not an elite class of running backs. The landing spots, you know, none of them were necessarily elite. And for that reason, like there's no rookie Saquon Barkley. There's no rookie Bijan Robinson in this year's draft class. You're going to have to rely on the proven guys uh, at the running back position. The rookies likely, unless there's injuries, will not be carrying you uh, this season. Now here we've got a couple more picks to make. Um, if we're looking at wide receiver, Christian Watson could be good value. Um, you know, looking at some other uh names here on this list. Uh, I mean, Josh Palmer, who's going to be number one wide receiver for the Chargers, uh, right? Justin Herbert's still there. If Honestly, I think I'm just going to go with TJ Hawkinson here. Uh, I'm going upside, and I think he's really, really good upside. Now, again, I mentioned some of the question marks, but we're drafting him as a backup at this point in time, so not all that worried. Uh, to me, I think the biggest takeaway here, again, I'm going to say it one more time. This is going to be uh, this year, uh, 2024 fantasy football, when taking the rookies into account, it's only going to be a couple of names. I, I really, really do think that that's the case, like Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, maybe Jonathan Brooks. Um, Brock Bowers at tight end is intriguing, but I don't love the, the, the destination. I I think it could be about the quarterbacks, honestly, more than anything uh, this this year, uh, as far as the rookies are concerned. But there's no no guy, a lot of elite talent, but they didn't necessarily go in the landing spot that will produce a top ten finish. So uh, at first glance, right now, still in April, that is my main takeaway from all of this. And again, things will change. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be things like that. So. Uh, let's not forget about that. Here, I'm going to go with upside. I'm going to select Christian Watson uh, for the Packers. And then I'm going to select one final guy here. I mentioned him before, Aaron Rodgers as a backup. Oh, and I think we just got sniped on Aaron Rodgers, if I uh, saw correctly. Um, we had, yes, we did. We had Aaron Rodgers and another guy that I liked at the quarterback position. Uh, Justin Herbert both get selected right before us. So Let's give ourselves, uh, you know, uh, some backup at that position. Uh, don't have to necessarily go with Caleb Williams if we don't want to. I think Jared Goff can be a decent pick. Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford. Um, for now, I'm just going to go with Jared Goff. Um, 
where are you, sir? Right there. Kirk Cousins, I think, again, uh, it all depends how he rehabs from that situation. Um, so I'll go with the safer pick at this point in time. Not all that worried about this. Not too worried about the grade I'm going to get. Uh, get a B. But again, more so than anything, I'm not really going to focus on the team that we put together. I, I wanted to focus on some of the rookies, some of the situations, uh, and give you my thoughts on how big of a factor they will be in this 2024 fantasy football season. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, again, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comments section. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.